Okay. I've connected up the Raspberry Pi. I've used a HDMI cable going towards the monitor. Got audio plugged in, mouse keyboard, and Ethernet, and of course the SD card we formatted and put Raspberry MC on earlier. I'm quite lucky that my laptop can use um, this USB 3.0 port slash eSATA port is actually a power pass through so I can connect a USB cable and it acts as the mains power coming through that so it is sufficient and it's enough to power the Raspberry Pi device without actually having to plug it into the mains which is nice alright plugged it in we have lights There we go. So there we go. Because this is the first boot we've done on this SD card in a fresh install, we are now having to wait for Raspberry MC to kind of compile and sort out the kernel and whatever it seems to be doing. There you go, we're saying we've got a good internet connection, so that's good. And there you go, typically 15 to 25 minutes on a home broadband connection. And we're at the login screen. Right, it's the first time Xbox Media Center is booted. I do have a bit of a shaky picture going on, and this is down to the resolution of my screen. Um, what it defaults at isn't actually supported. Usually it, it black out um, constantly flashing because I haven't got the proper resolution where I've done this in the past. Luckily it's not blacking out now, but it's still shaking around and it's not supported. I need to change that first of all. I've also noted there's a few um, add-ons that seem to crash or defunct from stock but they, they're usually crap like watch later and Vimeo and whatever so there you go MovieDB add-on is updated Yahoo one is now broken timed it just right so yeah changed it to a lower resolution because my screen is a stupidly high resolution uh, and the, the actual Raspberry Pi device, there's another broken repository, the Raspberry Pi doesn't support 1080p resolution for some reason, it might be the, the monitor doing it, I'll try it later on the TV but for the meantime I'm not too worried because streaming stuff at 1080p on my connection is pretty poor to be honest. So there you go, you've got basic settings, uh, audio in my case because I'm going to a monitor, I need to change that to my surround sound system. So change that. It does have a little bit of delay when you do it, but it will change over. So there you go. Now we're on analog. I'll leave it at two for the sake of just a demonstration. It's about the time you want to have a play with little settings, but most of it out of the box is pretty pretty much done for you. So I'm going back and I'm going to go to video, demonstrating files. From here um, you can set up video add-ons, add playlists or add files from USB sticks. Go to add-ons, go to get more. You've got to scroll down to YouTube. So there you go, install YouTube. Take a few seconds to download and install. Okay, now YouTube is enabled. So all we can do is go home, go to videos, go up to the add-ons, and then the YouTube
we go. First time starting up, you're, you're left with the settings for the YouTube application. From here, you can sign into your YouTube account and mess with various other settings. Right, you have options like safe search, you can turn that off if you want all your search results to come through as they are. Uh, video quality depends on your connection speed. This is the, the quality it will try load every time you load a YouTube video. Um, defaults at 720, but I'm going to put it as SD only because I have a very crappy connection. Or you can say to ask, so as long as you don't mind clicking what quality you want every time you load a video, you, you can set ask. But yeah, SD only for the sake of this for sake of this demonstration. Download location. This is where you save files. I haven't tried that yet. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Advanced settings. You've got options to show it in thumbnails and various other features. You can tweak to your liking. It's pretty set up, and you can leave it as it is. Same with the maximum video quality. When you download the file, you can download into 1080p even though you've you've streamed it in SD or you can do it the same as your playback you can show all the different options on the actual YouTube app too you can show or not show whichever you want to so if you don't want all the crap in there like YouTube disco and movies music whatever you can get rid of it but for the sake of it I'm just going to leave them all all open There we go. Login successful. Now we're up to the YouTube application. This is the page it gives you. Um, straight away, you can go to your uploads. Load directory. And it puts them into thumbnails for you. And of course, you can change that. You can change it into list view or a default XBMC view, whichever takes your fancy in the settings. So for the sake of it, I'll demonstrate one. And of course this will load up into SD because that's what I set the settings for. So first time out. It loads up and plays. Buffers really, really well. Of course it's playing an SD, it's a 720p file originally. As I said, just for the sake of the speed, put into SD. It plays really, really well. Sound as well. Said it all pretty much works out of the box. Even with HDMI, you have the ability to do 5.1, but obviously I've set the Sentence to analog, so it's only going to output 2.0. There you go, we go back again. I can go into add ons and I will go to the YouTube application. And then down at the bottom, we've got change plugin settings. So you click into that and it come up with your settings menu again. So from there you can change whatever settings you want. The one I'm interested in is the max video quality. So I said 720p or even 1080p but I'll leave it at 720 for now. Click OK. Now every time you load the video it will load into the 720p. This is of course if the video supports higher resolutions. If it's a standard definition video, you're still going to be left with standard definition quality. This is nice. If you if you don't have a 1080p screen or you don't want to wait for the 1080p videos to buffer, you can set to 720p and still get quite a good picture quality, but without the buffering time needed. But as I said, it's pretty quick to load. This is now in 720p. Had a very smooth picture. You got 
various options down the bottom so you can mess with your volume ampli amplification and you can enable subtitles on and off from this menu. Same with video options, you've got options to de-interlace it and crop the black bars, do view modes so you can stretch it to your resolution. And it's nice because if you're planning on keeping it at one resolution, you can save the settings and it'll carry it over to all the YouTube videos. There are subtitles. Obviously, I haven't got any for this video, but the interface is exactly the same as if it would be watching a normal film. So you still get all the options. I do find navigating by the keyboard is quicker for some reason. The mouse seems to slow down the interface quite a bit. So what we'll do is we'll load up some YouTube music videos. There you go. Almost instant streaming. That's at 720p because I've I've still got that within my settings. As long as you as long as you fast forward to the buffer value. Um, it's pretty quick to do. It does come up a bit kind of pixelated if you will until it skips to the next frame. I don't know why it does that but it's not really too much of an issue. And there you go, you can cancel out of that but keep the video in the background so you can go back to it later. go back into the add-ons and I'll go back into the uh, YouTube application and I'll change the settings yet again and I'll demonstrate 1080p Okay, so this time it should load up into 1080p. Give me an idea how quickly it buffers and loads. There we go. Slight little buffer at the top there that you've seen. Other than that, we're good to go. And it's now in 1080p. Let's demonstrate a little pixelated screen so it only happens until it skips to the next frame I don't know why it does that again I can't seem to get rid of the black bars on top and bottom of mine and I'm guessing that it's down to the resolution I've actually got the screen in on the settings. If I can figure out how to get 1920 by 1080 on the actual uh, Raspberry Pi then it will be full screen. Go back here again, show the interface over the top of the video, just pause. Go back in and I can try the uh, resolution. 
I'll demonstrate it. I can only go up to, I think, a 1680 by 1050. There you go. So, yeah, it won't let me have 1920 by 1080 resolution. I don't know why that is. I don't know whether that's the monitor outputting it. I said I'll, I'll try it later on the, on a 1080p TV. But I'm happy to stay with 720p resolution just for the sake of streaming. So you can continue. Uh, click play, obviously. So the video is very, very smooth. I can't really seem to change the settings. It might just be me. I've not played around with Xbox Media Center too much.